In today's video, we will be creating this. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and in today's video we're gonna create this abstract gaping animated whole planet thingy. I don't know what to call it. I found it somewhere on Pinterest and I figured let's try to recreate something similar to this. We're gonna be using Cinema 4D for this one. I use Octane Render in my visuals but you don't necessarily have to use that. We're mainly gonna focus on building this thing and animating it and the way that you want to render it in is completely up to you. So without any further ado, let's dive straight into the video. All right, so I have a basic scene set up. This basically consists of some lights in Octane, which you don't really have to worry about, as well as a little ramp, I guess, and a camera setup. I will start by adding a sphere to the composition. And I think we can just leave it at the basics. I'm just gonna change the type to icosahedron. And what I'm gonna do next is grab a displacement modifier and holding shift. And this will make it a child of the sphere. I'm just going to remove the basic scene here because we don't need to worry about it. So this displacer will now start displacing the sphere once we add a shader to it. The shader that we're going to use is a simple noise shader. So you want to go to the shading tab, click on shader here and go to noise. And something already starts happening. We'll go back to object and change the height to 50% or centimeters, sorry. And back to the shading go back into this noise and we'll modify this noise a little bit. I'm just gonna remove this little octane window here so you can see it properly. I think what we can do is change the global scale to 500. This will smoothen this thing up a little bit. I think let's double the segments in our sphere as well to 64, just so there's a little bit more geometry to work with. Let's animate this right off the bat. So I'm gonna turn the animation speed to 0.5 and I have 240 frames in my project here, which is eight seconds if we have 30 FPS. So the loop period will be eight. And if we press play now, we have this like weird organic morph thing. So the next thing that we wanna do is kinda make this not occur as much as possible. And the way we want to do that is slide in this low clip. And as you can see, what starts happening now is because our shader is really dark, uh, where it's dark, the shader, the displacement isn't really happening. So if we press play now, only the parts where the animation of the shader will be white, the displacement will be happening. The next thing that we want to do is grab another sphere and I think we can make this 80 centimeters, 64 radius, and again, icosahedron. And we might need to go back in and change some of the settings here. I'm just kind of spitballing it here. I haven't written down any of the measurements that I used when I first started this. So bear with me on this one. I'm gonna add a volume builder and a volume measure, which I'm holding all the option to. So the volume measure is not a parent of the volume builder. And we just want to drop both of these spheres inside the volume builder here. And as you probably see, nothing is happening or nothing interesting is happening. So the first thing I want to do is lower the voxel size to two centimeters. So there's a little bit more geometry and detail in there. We're going to actually move the bottom sphere up as well as in here. And we'll use the subtract method. So there's not a lot that you can see right here, but if we lower the radius of our second sphere, it's going to get more and more apparent. Essentially what's happening is because we use the subtract mode is our first initial animated sphere is subtracting itself from the volume of the second sphere, which is a normal sphere. So as you can see, this is pretty cool. This works pretty well already, but we're not really there yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate that sphere with the weird animation. And we're just gonna call this cut off sphere two, cut off sphere one, and main sphere. Just so we have a little bit more of an insight in what we're doing. And on the second displacer of the cut off sphere here, we're gonna dive into the noise and we're gonna change the seed here to something else. 
and we of course need to make sure that this one's also set to subtract and this will basically just ensure us that we have a little bit more of the cutout volume that we want i guess so another thing that you can probably do is up the size of your cutoff spheres but if we press play now this is doing something already what we're going to do now is add an sdf smooth in here and we'll just change the voxel distance to one and this smoothens the whole thing out a little bit more and here we go we already have some nice base animation so we'll call this base sphere and basically we're going to do this all over again for the outer ones so we'll call these outer spheres and we'll basically have the same setup as the main sphere we're only going to make this one a lot larger somewhere around here maybe and if we just make these ones larger as well and we're going to play around with the displacers a little bit so we're going to change the noise of the second displacer so select your two displacer modifiers click on the noise and we'll change this one to fire let's change the scale a little bit so we'll make it a little bit more vertical and we'll remove this low clip part so this one has a little bit more holes in them as you can see and something else that you can try is go to the object of the displacer and if we lower that to maybe 39 or something 40. What happens now basically is because there is a lot more volume intersecting with each other, the parts around the planet are just a little bit smaller. Well, we want to kind of have that like planet ring effect where the thing will also revolve in a single circle around the first planet. So what you want to do is go to the volume builder and add in a torus to that. And in the volume builder, make sure that the torus is under the SDF smooth and set to intersect. Now if we go to the torus and we'll lower the pipe radius to something around 25. Let's just go out of our camera for a second. Basically our volume mesh is only visible now wherever our torus intersects with it. So as you probably can see if we just check this off, this is where our torus is visible and now this is only where our particles are visible. And again we can just add an SDF smooth to this and this starts animating itself already. So perhaps if we now look at the cutoff, I'm gonna change this back to 45 maybe. So there's are just a little bit more. And maybe lower the size to 20. So one thing that we can still do now is go to the outer sphere to its coordinates and animate the horizontal rotation of this. So I'm gonna go and point a keyframe in here and go to the very end. And I'll just do 360. And for the base sphere, I'm gonna do the opposite. So I'm gonna just have it rotate from zero degrees to minus 360 degrees and i'm just going to go into my timeline f curve grab both of these animations and make them linear so there's no easing in there and as you can see they now revolve around each other a little bit more and the last thing that i did was i grouped these together so i just rotated this a bit and i pressed in 22 and a half here and 45 on here and then you know get this nice diagonal planet effect and of course, if you want to, if you're going to just add another null, drop that in here and just have this null rotate as well. So 100, 360 degrees again and make sure that it's not easing. It's a little bit hard to see because it's going really slowly, but as you can see, it's also kind of like rotating this way now. Uh, the possibilities are virtually endless. So I highly recommend you to start playing around with the noises that basically call, cause all of these holes to happen. Uh, if you feel like the geometry is a little bit off, what you can do is grab your volume meshes here and put them both into a remesh. This will add some render time to it, but this will give you a much smoother geometry as you can see right now. So on the screen right now, you can see the final render that I made using what we just made in this tutorial. And there you go, guys. I hope this video was useful to you. I hope I didn't really go too fast and you understood everything that I was doing during this process. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below and I will help you out. And if you are really, really stuck, you can also join us on Discord share a screenshot of where you are stuck and some of us in our community will just help you out. 
If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to leave a like and a comment on this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more tutorials. At this point, I already have over hundreds of tutorials on my channel, so it might be worth subscribing to see what else there will be uploaded on this channel in the future. If you want to get the project files for yourself, you can download them on my Patreon channel, where you can grab all of the project files from all of my tutorials for just five bucks a month, and you can do with them whatever you like. So with all of this being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.